Hi everyone, I'm Charlie Nanda from the Needham Council for Arts and Culture. Today is November 22nd, and I'm going to confirm that all our council members are in, and persons anticipated on the agenda are present. So when I call your name, please wave, say present. Um, Elizabeth Cook. Present. Hi, Elizabeth. Julia Gould. Present. Hi, Julia. Hi. Um, Bala Venkat is not available. She is in Dubai at the moment at her brother's wedding, so she won't be here tonight. Um, she's far away. Green Road. Present. Hi, Green. Uh, Joni Shockett. Present. I see you, Joni. Uh, Wendy Siegel. Present. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Heather Simmons, not yet, and um, Dennis Zhang. Joni, President. hi Dennis, how are you? Hello, hello Charlie, how are you everyone? Good. Um, Joni, want to text Heather for me or email her and just give her a little nudge? Um, okay, so this meet, open meeting of the council is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 20. 20 due to the state of emergency of the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. So in order to mitigate the transmission, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law in a publicly uh, accessible physical location. So we will not feature public comment. Um, and for this meeting, um, it will, we'll, we're holding on Zoom and it will be posted on YouTube later. Um, so if there's anything that you have on your screen, make sure it's uh, it could be recorded when you're sharing. Um, hopefully I'll be able to share my screen and um, just make raise your hand or press the hands up button if you want to talk. And um, I think we'll be able to run it that way. And here we go to the agenda. So the first thing we have to do is actually um, approve the past minutes, which Heather did and sent out. Um, do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting? I see Joni moving to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? I second, Julia. Thanks, Julia. Did anybody have any questions about the minutes? Any additions? Um, okay, and then just raise your hand if you say aye to move the minutes. I see everyone's hands great thank you amy did i not call you in the role amy oh my gosh you're on the second page that's why hi amy how are you you made it and actually if you noticed on the minutes i added you in on there because you were uh, the caller that we had from the last meeting that we didn't have your name on it so amy lamb are you here i am here hi i can hear you thanks thanks for <laughs> raising your hand on that one okay so we are going to move into the mural update first. Um, hopefully everyone got a chance to see the three murals. Um, Heather and Joni are the chairs of our um, committee, um, the public art committee, but along with them, the selection committee, drum roll please, has recommended moving forward with the artwork option number two called Blossom by RC Ryan Christensen. Um, so that artwork, um, after we interviewed the candidates, it was a really tough choice but um, the selection committee decided to go, uh, wanted that they wanted to recommend that piece. Um, they thought it was the best week uh, piece for the site and that it um, uh, described, it, it felt like it was connected to Needham, which they really liked about it. Um, they really loved the artist's work, um, the colors of it and that, that piece. And I'm not sure if any, everybody knows that um, pansies are our town flower and April is uh, pansy month for Needham because the naturalist Denny Zringibal, which was N.C. White's grandfather, I don't know how the heck you say that name, but he introduced horticulture to Needham in the 60s and cultivated the giant Swiss pansy here. So that's it's, um, a little bit of the history of why the pansy was chosen. Um, the Needham Historical Society has the pansy Day festival in April. And so there's uh, there was talk of sort of potentially tying um, the painting of the mural in April to this festival as a larger thing. And so that was an interesting, um, he, he had proposed um, tying it into the Pansy Day um, festival. The other two pieces were really amazing as well. Um, so it was a really tough choice. Um, I don't know if you all got a chance to vote in the um, mural poll 
it had an amazing um, response in total. There were 660 votes, which is a really big um, response for our town. Um, we posted it on Facebook first, um, shared it with the artists, and then uh, we also posted it on the town newsletter. So it was a very, um, uh, the respondents were very, um, I would say, um, digitally inclined because it was all digital, you know, uh, virtually promoted. We didn't put it in the hometown weekly this time. A um, few days into the um, poll, I actually added a zip code because I could tell um, like a lot of the votes dropped at different times. So um, the, uh, uh, the Pansy did lead for overall votes um, narrowly um, against um, this, the second piece titled We're Here by Amanda Beard Garcia, which is an amazing work um, that features um, eight muralists from the greater Boston area. And they're all women of color. One of them is actually from Needham and this other seven are from more of a greater Boston. Um, and so that was a very close second when I um, took out when I only focused on the zip codes, um, it was a much larger lead for um, the Blossom piece based on the zip code, um, which was what the selection committee kind of thought about um, what people in Needham would, re would, would respond to as well. Um, so that's the recommendation. Um, uh, we would like to have a vote from this council. And then the next steps for it would be, it still needs to go in front of a lot of more approval bodies. So that would be the um, location, which is the management company. Um, it also would have to go in front of the select board and the um, and then the design review board. And then it also has to go to um, town council for uh, legal approval. So there are a bunch of more hurdles first. Um, but we haven't notified the artists uh, what our recommendation is yet. So that also, um, and I'm using the term recommendation as you can say, as you see, because um, there's obviously a lot of other bodies that um, are have to agree um, before the final piece is contracted. Um, so that, let me ask now, does anybody have any questions? Um, the next thing we have to do is as the NCAC, do we vote to endorse the recommendation of the selection committee? Um, and either we can have discussion, you guys can ask questions, or someone can move to make that recommendation. Sorry, that was a lot. Hi, Heather. Welcome aboard. I just Hi. told them what everybody, the selection committee is recommending the Blossom piece and why. So um, did anybody have any questions? Raise your hand. No? OK. Um, does anybody want to move Joni or Heather or anyone to endorse <laughs> the, the recommendation of the selection committee? Joni, I hear your motion to move that we endorse the recommendation of the selection committee. Does anybody second it? Elizabeth Cook seconds it. Wonderful. Okay, I'm actually going to take an actual vote on this one and I'm going to start this time with Amy Lamb. So if you approve of um, this recommendation, please say aye or uh, nay. Aye. aye. Amy Lamb says aye. Uh, Elizabeth Cook seconded, so she says aye. Wendy Segal? Siegel. It is Siegel? <laughs> Why did I want to say? I don't know. Okay, um, Siegel, I've only known you for a decade now. Yes, I second it. Aye. Okay. Um, Corrine Road? Aye. Uh, Julie Gould? Aye. And Dennis Zhang? Aye. Aye. And Heather Simmons? Aye. Aye. Well, that's a unanimous. And Charlie Nanda says aye as well. That's very exciting. It's been a long process, um, obviously. So um, I feel confident in what we and how we built it. And um, yay, that's a big deal. Thank you, everybody. Boy, we're going to, Elizabeth, we are going to get through this meeting like nobody's business. Hello, Treasury update. Corrine Road, you take it away. Okay, so just with the um, amount that we have available to grant this time around is $20,361.52. <laughs> wow. Um, we posted on, on our sort of... Um, PR that we were granting up to 17,300, we said. So 9,000 from the state, 
and 8,300 from the town. Basic, basically, that's what it is. Um, Corrine did some amazing work with our town treasurer to figure out that number. We always try to keep, in the past years, we've tried to keep around $3,000 or so in our second account for other things because we, we don't have to spend it. Um, we can use it for things throughout the year as, as we vote upon. Um, obviously this 8,300 is the first year the town's given us money and we're give, we wanna give it all towards the grants. Um, we came into a little bit of, uh, uh, there's just a, gonna be some kind of tricky um, paperwork for Corrine. Thank goodness we have her because <laughs> that funding ends June 30th. It also has a couple caveats to it that um, it has to have been a project that happened before June 30th, which is different than the timeline for our grants. Our grants can go all the way through um, December 31st, 2023. Go, Corrine. So if I could ask, as you're reviewing each of your own grant proposals, if you can make a note whether or not that um, particular um, item would be eligible for the town funds, which, as Charlie said, would have to be completed by June 30th of next year. That's awesome. And so when we go through them, um, I, I took it upon myself to put the dates, a column of dates in there. Perfect. I, I did notice as I was reading through the grants, and I don't know if anybody else noticed that sometimes people can say that's their date, um, but they're not, that's the date they want to do. It's ne not necessarily confirmed. So I think that's one thing to think about. Okay. So, so our goal to shoot for is 17.3. Okay. Um, and we okay. want to really definitely um, use the town funding first if we can, because we lose that. Um, the, the state funding rolls over if we need it to, if we don't assign it. Um, Joni, go ahead. I see your hand. I'm just curious how we ended up with such a funny number like 52 cents and. <laughs> yeah, some Ooh. of that is, uh, some of the money is actually things that we bought over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So it's like, you know, but there was a time when someone was like, could you please just give away this penny? Like <laughs> 701 cents, but. Um, um, okay, so in terms of conflict of interest, did anybody see any grants that were conflicts of interest for them that they're working on? I didn't hear any messages from anyone. Uh, conflicts of interest, I know you've all done your exciting training. Don't, are, are um, things that you're like, I think you have to, it's a small town, so you can be, have your kid go to plugged in band, like that doesn't make, that doesn't constitute a conflict of interest in general, but if there is something, just raise your hand and we can flag you or um, mute you or um, don't, it, um, just let us know. Okay, um, I'm gonna share my screen and then Julia, I'm doing this driving. So um, wish me luck because you were the best at this before. Um, so the exciting part is Elizabeth, you get to go first because um, you're at the top and then Char uh, me and Bala have, uh, if you see throughout them, you see Bala and my names. I took, we took the ones that are the center at the heights, which we, for, for that process, we, um, I usually call the director at the center of the heights if necessary and have her prioritize which ones the seniors most want to see in production there if it doesn't have a letter. And um, this year we actually didn't get that many. If you notice, we have maybe less than usual. So um, that's why they're kind of filtered in through. So Elizabeth, you can start off and go through all of yours and then we'll move on to Julia. And so can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Hey, okay. Charlie? Yeah, Dennis. Uh, this is Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So quickly, so uh, you mentioned the conflict of interest, but I'm not sure if this is but basically I work with the Chinese Friends of Needham. There's, I think there's two applications um, from Chinese Friends of Needham. Uh, one is number four, one is the last one for New Year's celebration. Just want to bring this up, up front, uh, yeah. just so in case if you need to mute me or it's like uh, I need to leave the, the, the room first and then come back later, that's fine. Okay, that's perfect. Um, and that's actually the, I think the one that you wrote is definitely conflict of interest. So that one you would definitely, um, do you get paid for Chinese Friends of Needham? No, it's uh, all voluntary. Okay. 
Yeah, I, Dennis, which one did you write? Uh, the last one is the Chinese New Year. It's with my name there. Okay. Uh, okay. The last one, the CFN yeah. Chinese New Year. Okay. Um, one number right four. Here. Yeah, number four is uh, uh, submitted by Tracy, uh, who works with uh, CFN also. Uh, but it's uh, I, I, I did not have any involvement in that application. Okay. Yeah, I would stay muted for that one just if you can. Um, and then. Um, sure. Uh, all right. So, how much info do you want me to say? I think they, I think basically, this first meeting is for us to go through and kind of weed out the the ones that we need to ask more questions of before our second meeting where we're voting. Um, I think for things that are solid, we definitely funded them before, and we feel pretty confident that it's a strong application and it's clear. You can be very quick about if that makes okay. sense. All right. So I'm ready to go. The first one is the Arlington Players Theater. Um, that first of all, it is eligible for the April, May is when they want the funding. Um, they're requesting $750. We have funded them before. This project is all to do with uh, Ukraine and about the Ukraine war. Um, it has a Ukrainian born playwright. Um, and, you know, there's a whole paragraph about what it's about. Uh, we have in the past funded the Cherry Orchard and Seagulls. And um, I gave this group a five. I, I just see nothing that would stand in our way of, of funding them as we have before. Great. So is that enough? That's enough. Yeah, definitely. That's a strong one. All right. Uh, and not everybody has to give their scores if they've already done them. That's fine. I, it's helpful, I think. But um, the next one I have is um, sound play. I think that's what I have here. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, a minimal amount of money. They're asking for two hundred dollars. This would be at the library. Uh, it would be in January again. Uh, funding from the town would work. Um, it's for children uh, zero to six. Well, I don't know about zero, but they, uh, it is, um, you know, an underserved group. I don't think that I've seen in the past anything for toddlers. So it's a, a music um, thing open to the public at the library. They said about a hundred people they would serve and they are, asking for $200. Um, so, um, you know, I gave it a four because the population is only a hundred people that tr they're trying to reach. But then again, you don't want more than a hundred toddlers in the room at the same time, I don't think so. Elizabeth, is it a one-time class at the library I, or is it multiple? It's two. Well, it just, it says here, the project takes place in January. Um, the uh, I I had a sense it was just once. Okay. But, um, I can't imagine a hundred people at the library, but that's big. So it's about infants and families with small children at the library. Do you is there a letter of support from the library? Um, I I have to look. I didn't see one, so I I would follow up by calling them and personally and and seeing um if they've made any headway to securing it. Okay, so questions be. are secure the library and questions are one time. And- um, I'm guessing for 200 bucks, it's probably one time, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Anybody but, else have any questions about it? It sounds cool. I've just, I found the library notoriously difficult to book sometimes and I, that's, this is the only thing we sent um, Corrine to the, a library meeting she attended recently to meet some of the um, programming um, professionals there. Um, it ended up being for the gallery programming mostly, right? But um, it'd be good if we could kind of get into the library staff to know what they're interested in doing in the same way that we do at Center at the Heights. But okay, uh, well that's. Um... I, I will contact this woman and find out where she's at. Thank you. Um, 
the uh, third one I have is the Chinese Friends of Needham. So Dennis, you might want to mute yourself. Um, the amount requested was six hundred dollars, three hundred for supplies. Um, I I gave it a high rating. It takes place here. Um, it's going. They're planning for May twenty third. Um, it's for Asian and Pacific Islanders. Uh, I based part of my excitement about this was that when we did the table at the Needham Town Fair, it was overwhelming uh, the number of Asian children who came to that table. Um, I chalked it up for the population in Needham, uh, but it also has to be a great interest. Um, they ho hoping to have some Chinese dance connected with it. Um, and it seems certainly to be a high quality and part of our, uh, I don't know about underserved, but certainly diverse voices in our town. So- And did I, you give it a four or a five? I gave it a, a four and a half. <laughs> Okay. And um, did so it say Town Hall Plaza again? That the uh, town, yeah Needham Town Center on May twenty third, three hundred dollars okay. for supplies. Um, so I, the request I, is for six hundred though, right? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, and your last one is is the Dedham Coral Society which we have funded in the past. They asked for $500. In the past, we've given them 350. Uh, they have a huge budget of 87,000. But I think if I remember correctly from our conversations of the past, we felt that there are Needham people who sing with this group, um, Needham people that uh, participate and go to the concerts and that it's certainly a goodwill thing. Um, I don't have anything much more to say about it. I mean, it's a professional uh, singing volunteer um, group that has high quality as best I can figure. Uh, but it is called the Dedham Society and it does come uh, have its home in Dedham. Um, Are the shows in Dedham or Needham? Is well, I think they're mainly I Dedham in West Roxbury, as I remember. Okay. And did you have a score? Uh, yeah, I gave them a three and a half. Awesome. Uh, only because they're not right here. And it could be that we, we have no idea how many people from Needham are in this choral society. So, you know, it's hard to tell how much it serves Needham. But some of their members are from Needham as well. Yes. Yeah, the audience. Okay. I mean, that's what we've heard before. I have um, when we've discussed the other years. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. Good work. Julia, um, you're up. Okay. So uh, the first one there is um, the Discovery Museum. Um, we've funded them in the past, it's a small amount. Um, and I would say I'd recommend we fund them again, um, unless we want to focus on kind of organizations specifically in 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 Needham but again they serve um the area so I didn't go through and do my scores yet because there are a few people that I want to reach out to mm -hmm. um but um again they're a long it's time for a free day of um for special needs or correct yes um so it is um do, 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 do. Where is it? Just one second. Yeah, so it's their Open Doors Connection Initiative, which allows families with financial or other barriers to visit the museum at no cost. Oh, financial barriers? No. Oh. <laughs> or other oh. barriers. Um, and they did give some numbers. So they said in July 2022, approximately, approximately 170 Needham residents visited the museum through that program. So I think it's pretty beneficial. Um, Amy, what do you think if this is a program that's like 
did there, it's not a specific is there a specific date that they lifted it's just, no it's they going, did not right? give, yeah it's kind of a date range yeah, um i'm not sure about um the funding yeah the funding piece wendy yeah. i see you have your hand raised and i i don't know how long it was raised for did you have a question uh, unmute and then um Uh, my question was because I'm I'm very new at this, so I don't. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure no, it out. Ask whenever you want. Um, so when it has a location, does that mean this is where the project wants to take place? Yeah, yeah. And so one of the main questions for us is, you know, that it's it's what is the public benefit to Needham? Um, obviously, this is the Children's Museum in Acton. So they've asked for us for funding for years because, as Julia said, that I don't. There's a number of people. You know, there's not many children's museums around, so they need support for this project, and it serves this many Needham residents who go there. So okay. the public benefit is Needham residents attending. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it, so it doesn't have to necessarily be it based you know, located in Needham, it just has to be public benefit for the citizens of Needham. Then we kind of evaluate based on that. Okay, Julia, go ahead. All right. Um, so the next one up was uh, Slam Theater, which is um, four to six 10 minute plays performed or read um, by um, the applicant plus other local playwrights. Um, the audience is Newton, Needham and the surrounding towns. Um, they didn't give like specific as to like young, older families, et cetera. Um, but it's, I think, really open to, to people of all ages. They're asking for a, a lot. Um, so I believe it's what, 1250? Um, and so it, it, and they are also applying to the Newton, um, council as well. Um, they do, 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 do have a location? Um, but I didn't see any mention of a kind of specific date and they, um, just sent resumes and like an overview of it, but no like letters of support or anything like that. So I did want to reach out to get a little bit more information on timing, um, support. And I also didn't see anything in here about um, plans for if they don't get funding um, or maybe I skipped over it. Um, oh yeah, I skipped over it. They'll say that they'll fundraise if they need to, to make up the rest. Um, so a maybe, um, I want to reach out to them to get a little bit more info. I have February 1st for some reason. I think maybe it said February, 2023. And it might be a secure date just because um, it is, it's their own space that they're, it's a Newton Center. Yes, space. February, 2023, but no so, exact date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a really interesting new proposal. We've never had anything from mm -hmm. them because I think they're pretty, pretty new. They've only been around a year or two or something. Yeah. And they're, you know, young, young people doing really diverse, interesting work. So yeah, definitely. Does anybody else have other questions that she should ask for this one? We don't have a ton of theater usually, but no, and not a lot of poetry either. So this would be an interesting thing. I, I have a question. They're asking for a fair amount of money, and I, I'm just got it pulled it up. I'm trying to see where they'll get the money if we don't give them that much. Yeah, so they're also applying to the new end council for grant money. Um, and then if they don't get the full amount, they will fundraise through networks or Kickstarters if necessary. It'll be interesting for us to look at how what funding levels we do this this year because I don't know if, how you all feel about it whether we start just by doubling what we had last year or if we're going to fund more I guess as we go through or look at it but the cap for us last year and, and since I've been on the council was 750 um, which is was rare to actually give out there was only ever one the last five years so um this would be more. Yeah, and I think it, we really have to be careful of something that's brand new 
because you said expectations uh, moving forward. But yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, so I'll gather some more info and then we can regroup on that one. Um, so the other two that I was looking at was the interactive music. Um, so this is two 45 minute concerts um, with movement interactions and group activities. Um, it is for children, um, children zero to eight and families, um, as well as children with disabilities. Um, it's free for attendees to uh, go to. And um, it is going to be held at the library. And do, 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 did he did not send any um, letters of support, at least none that were in the grant booklet. Um, so I did want to reach out to see if there's um, if he does have any letters of support and um, if he has a specific timing he said spring to fall 2023 so depending on when it falls it could qualify for the town funding okay. um, but you i think it sounds like a great program you said it is it geared towards um a specific uh he just group? mentions children um and families okay. yeah okay so i know that there's like a handful of kind of uh because i know with we've done this in the past with um applications that are heavy on um, serving certain communities. So we can look at the others and see whether or not this. Yeah, and Julia, this might be a good point for you to mention to everyone um, who hasn't done this before uh, yeah. that we sometimes get choppers, which, right? That's like kind of what it, is that what you call them? I guess, yeah. So um, grants that don't necessarily have a venue so they apply to a bunch of cultural councils, hoping to get books somewhere, sort of treating it as if it's like a, um, and sometimes that does work to their advantage. Well, they'll, they'll be funded and then the council will help them um, secure a venue or a partner, um, but they do apply to a lot of them. And um, so that, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's this one you're looking at now, Julia. Yeah. Um. Oh, and the amount that he's asking for is 600. So it's, um, you know, middle of the road, not not on the lower end of some of the other grants. Um, and then the fourth one is um, a cultural and his, oh, I can't remember the full title, but essentially, um, I believe it's like a dance through the decades, but yeah. to Beatles, um, or I guess a reflection on the 60s. There was, um, yeah, the, through the music of the Beatles, you're right. Yeah. Um, so this is, I believe, one that we've denied previously. Um, it does serve um, our aging community. Um, there was no letter of support, um, or I guess there were um, essentially reviews of past events from other towns, but no letter from like the New Needham uh, Council on Aging of Support. Um, it is a small grant amount of $400. Um, there isn't a location yet. And also the date was vague with July and August. So I did want to reach out to see um, if they've thought about locations or at least are catching, you know, any type of uh, looking for any type of um, specific information for the event. When I talk to Aisha at the Center at the Heights, I'll ask him about this one too, because I'm pretty sure that this was something that the Heights, if I recall, was not, that the seniors were not interested in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it wasn't funded in the past. Um, but yeah, I'll, let's both do points on that. Yeah. And that was your last one? Yes, yeah, just those four, I think. All right, who's up next, Amy? Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good. So this is my first time doing this. So yeah, like, yeah, we'll, we'll walk like, through. You got some hard ones. <laughs> yeah, like Wendy, I just wasn't quite sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, so the first one is actually an enrichment program for kids who um, already attend the after, uh, the after school program over at Cook's 
play school after uh, cooks after school. Um, it's for kids from K through six and they're looking for $1,300. So it's, I think it's a sizable amount. Uh, they're passed, in the past they were granted 750. And um, this enrichment program basically is one, there's like a story time where children uh, will be guided by the director of story time. Um, they'll learn how to write a story, illustrate it, print it and publish it in book form. And uh, there'll be approximately four sessions of that. The second project that they're looking to do is to, um, it's more like a pottery, it's a pottery class. Um, kids will learn to create, paint, glaze, and fire a piece of pottery. Penny um, contacted us a lot to work with her. Um, and when she was writing this grant, they were the group, she was the, um, the writer of the grant for the Needham Housing Authority last year for the musical festival. Um, so we funded them for that. That's what that 750 was for. Um, they just restarted this after school program and the Needham Public Housing Authority is um, the low income community and the only one um, that's supported by the town. So it's a, it's a very good um, partner for us. I gave it a five because it's for kids. <laughs> and I think that anything uh, to spark their interest in writing and also be creative with their hands is like, uh, you know, it's, it's good. And they did mention that if there's no funding offered to them that they will go ahead and solicit the local banks again. But, you know, they just don't want to do that and, and use up their, you know, their brownie points, let's just say, so. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody have any questions about that one? Heather, waving yeah, your hand. Um, so I guess I have to abstain somewhat because I talked to them about the pottery thing. Um, but I, is it all right if I just say something? Um, it's not opinion based. It's just some facts after talking to them about it that might that might alter what they wrote. But um, yeah, is it something different from what they have there? Because if so, if you think uh, Amy should call and talk to them again about, um, I don't think it'll. I, so so it was just up in the air whether they were actually going to do this ceramics. Um, yeah. or just use like an air dried clay one oh. is cheaper than the other okay so that's all I can th that's all I know so oh, okay so I they said, talked to you about doing the ceramics portion because yeah yeah, yeah. so I won't I, I won't give any opinions even though Got it. I too I won't know but <laughs> yeah I don't I don't think the type business. of clip yeah, yeah. So, um so is the 1300 is to pay for staff Amy um um let me see. And, and supplies for the after Yeah, the salaries and fees. Correct. So salary and fees are 800 and then the um the the second project I see Heather's name now. Hi Heather. Hi. <laughs> um is for 500. Okay, yeah, you yeah, then you would abstain from voting on that one Heather when it comes time. Yeah, of course. Awesome. But yeah. It sounds, it makes sense to me. It doesn't seem like a crazy amount of money for the for what it is. Um, okay, did you wanna give it a, you gave it a five? Okay, what's your next one? Outdoor mm -hmm. exhibit and puppet show. Oh, John Lechner. Yeah, so um, this is an outdoor exhibit and puppet show that um, John is requesting $500. He was given $500 last time. And basically it is an outdoor exhibit during the summer. So this could probably qualify for, it's eligible for the town funding. Um, uh, basically having like a, these, it, it's on insects, I guess, insect display and, and just uh, uh, education on the types of insects in and around you know, our local um, town. Um, I think it's a great thing. It's for anyone, kids and adults. I mean, I think it's just educational in general. Um, and it just basically is the puppet show is free and it will educate people on the importance of certain insects and um, that ties in with the environment. Um, I think it's important because I'm in real estate and I see all these like big homes going up and all these trees being knocked down. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, like what's happening under, underneath in the ground. So I just think it's educational. I gave it a five. Um, 
It's only five hundred dollars. Did you say there was going to be some like a public art, like a the piece stays in the garden over this summer? So yes. Yeah, so he's building like these um, display mod, you know, like displays of insects, I guess. Um, and they will be in the ground outside of uh, Gore's Mills. Gore's Mills, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Didn't didn't he propose the same thing last year? Yeah, he yeah. did he, he did this show last year. Um and then within, he with insects, the whole very exactly the same. Yes. And he said that if he doesn't get the funding, he will just scale back his um displays and what's the name of the project? Um, out, outdoor exhibit and puppet show. Okay, it, so he did, he's not calling it a bug's eye. Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, not so that I he, could see. Amy, uh, if you talk to him, could you find out what happened last year? I actually uh, saw it last year. I went. It was really, it was great. So he did the whole um, these life size drawings of bugs and, yeah. and installed them in the Gorse Mills Gallery. And then um, he he made all these puppets and did a whole show in the in the outside at Gorse Mills and had you know. So are these? Uh, that's my question. Are these different bugs? Are they the same bugs? I yeah, mean, Amy, I'd follow up with that. That's a good question. I mean, is that so? I would call them and just inquire. Okay. Yeah, that we we funded it last year. Um, are these the same bugs or has he got different bugs and different stories? I mean, if a family went and they already saw it last year, they might be a little disappointed. You know, at least new bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe he's got the virus down. <laughs> yeah, ask him how he's building on it or how it's different. Okay, next one is the personal history of Needham. Um, let's see. Oh, it's a film. So personal history of Needham. So filming of this will be in various locations in and around Needham. It will be um, projected. The screening of it would be for September 23rd, hopefully at the library, it says. I saw um, that it said they were corresponding, but it was not secure. Correct, yes. And basically this person would be interviewing four um, long time residents of Needham and basically um, giving like a, 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 like a showing the past and president of I guess their thoughts and 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 their their history, um, in spite of technology and historical changes. So the theme is technology and change. Yes. Oh. Anybody uh, have questions look, on that? They're look. They're requesting two hundred and fifty dollars, um, and this is. I believe she was a student. Over at Babson. Oh, interesting. So she would get all of her film, um, like the cameras and all the use of the film um, from the school. It's not very much money, so that's interesting. So not much money. It's uh, basically to enlarge pictures and uh, look look up historical, I guess, photos and, and gather those for the film. So a little money, but. Um, Anybody have questions to, for Amy to ask? I mean, I, I guess my only question would be is, um, is how confirmed is she with what she's gonna do with it afterwards? Okay. And if she was going to show it on the cable channel or just at the library, okay. because um, I put the public benefit that I see would be for the residents who were being interviewed and then for it being shown at a place. Um, 
and that location, I think you definitely would want to have as a part of the grant. Okay. Any uh, anybody else have any questions for that one? Would it be? Um, could I ask like the names of the people that she's interested in interviewing, or yeah, I, I, does that I'm, matter? Or? It's it's. I've always really enjoyed interviewing, talking to the people who've written the grants because they usually they don't get enough aren't able to get it all in there. And so, yeah, ask her what the impetus for the project was and if she has any partners really, because sounds like something you would have had some, like it just probably came out of somewhere or some conversation with. I think she's she person. mentioned that she interviewed or, or talked to people over at the senior center yeah. and people were interested. And I can ask them too about it if, it, if, if that was something that was, came up in a conversation and they're interested in, because then that would make sense to show it that have a showing there at the senior center yeah. rather than the library. True. Yeah. Awesome. OK, what's the next yeah. one you have? Ah, um, this is in my heart, social, emotional, creative dance residency. They're requesting a thousand dollars. They've received six hundred in the past, and this one would qualify for the town funding. Um, they're looking to do it in the summer um, for three to six year olds, about 15, three to six year olds. So this is like a summer camp is how I read it. Um, it's for, uh, there's more to it. It was like for social and emotional challenged children. And this, type of dance would uh, help them express themselves? Yeah, we funded her last year for $600 and that was for Elliot and uh, elementary and- um, Who is it? Um, Sunita? Sunita, yeah. yeah. So she actually invited me to watch it. So it was really fascinating. It was um, for the, you know, the high needs classroom and it was outside. So it was a, it's like an integrative um, music and dance class, um, which they, I don't think they have dance residencies at, um, in part of the programs at school at all. So it was, it was what I saw was pretty valuable for that age group. Um, this, I don't know if she's not working with the school on this one. I think the school was difficult to work with. And so maybe she's, it sounds like is she going out on in a different avenue with a partner right there's no location um yeah. that was noted so i'm sure if you call her and talk to her she's um lovely she's come to all of our grant um open houses i'm sure she's probably developed it a little bit more um since then as well so so should i check in with her and just check on the location that she's looking to have yeah, it check or... in and see what any if she has any updates about it about it and look, yeah a partners yeah location we we funded it because we didn't definitely didn't have any um uh differently developing programs that we funded before so is it is it like more dance or more like yoga movements um, it, given this age, you know, I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's this. more like music. Um, uh, she uses instruments and dance. It's like, so it's like music integration for your body. These, these were really high needs students. Um, mm. So uh, a couple in wheelchairs, a couple non-speaking. Wow. So. Okay. You got all the hard ones, Amy. I know, and I'm like, what am I supposed to really do here? <laughs> <laughs> you just get to call and talk to them and report back to us. I mean, okay. they're all, I mean, they all seem great. But... Okay. And then Thanks. you also have Cindy Rifka Marshall, which I don't think she's applied for something in a few years. Yeah, 2012 was the last time she got a grant. And she came to the open house. What did you think of it? Um, Voices of Needham. I didn't do that one. That would be me. Oh, oh, okay. You're done. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you're like, Shh, thank goodness. I made it. Good job for your first time, Amy. And you had some hard ones. So I'll follow up with that phone call, then. Yeah, there you go. 
All right, go, ahead, go for it, Kareen. What do you got? Okay. Um, so the voices of Needham. Um, it looks like we have funded her a couple of years ago. Uh, she's requesting eight hundred and fifty dollars, and it looks like it's to pay for workshops. And this would be to um, find participants who are typically disadvantaged, either um, uh, people of color or different ethnicities, and teaching them through workshops um, how to express their stories, um, how they feel um, other or marginalized. Um, the thing is, is that the, so the workshops will help uh, happen at Gorse Mills during spring. Um, the final event, she doesn't have a location yet um, determined for it and telling at the public event is not required. Um, so I'm not sure what she would do if nobody volunteers to participate in her final event. That's what they call a one woman show, Corinne. I, I guess. Is that what she did last time? Do we know what she did last time? Um, I don't know. I didn't know. I don't think there was back in 2012. I don't think there were computers that recorded that. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> they, don't, they didn't. We could yeah. go back and see what the name of it was, but I'm sure it was a storytelling workshop for something. And actually on that note, um, Penny Kirk at um, the Needham Housing Authority was looking for a storytelling person. So I gave her Cindy's phone number. So me, I mean, I don't know, that sounded like a cool partnership to me, but um, yeah, it sounded like Cindy needs a partner for this. Um, and I did connect her to like Needham Youth and Family Services as well. Um, so it would be, I think it, it would be good to follow up with her and see if she's gotten anywhere with partnering with someone. I mean, it sounds like a great workshop. I think she just needs an audience. Mm -hmm. She did say that she'd um, try to work through the Needham Diversity Initiative and um, also the uh, At My Neighbor's Table and Needham United Against Racism Initiative. So oh, she, she has identified some people. Um, I just, um, I don't know if she's gotten any participants yet. Oh, great. Um, so I can reach out to her and ask about that. So, I mean, it sounds like it would be um, definitely interesting and serve um, a good population, uh, just the unknown of whether or not there'll be anyone at the final event and when that event will be kind of scaled it down to me to like a 4.5 rather than just a five okay. um, full out. Um, any other questions you guys wanted me to ask her? No, it's good. No, okay. Um, so the next one was kind of interesting. Um, it's the magic of Irv Weiner. Um, so the requested amount is $600 and it would be at the library or community center. Um, I don't think it would be eligible for the town funds. Um, so the interesting thing about this is that apparently Irv Weiner Weiner is also known as the fabulous Mr. Fingers. And he was a magician here in Needham um, who passed away in 1999. So this would be discussing the career life and magical creations that made him a legend among magicians nationwide, which I just thought was like really unique and not anything we had. So it's free to all ages, um, target audience is youth to adult to attend. Um, I've never heard of this person. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought it was kind of different. So, but I gave him a four since I didn't know how much interest magicians would have in all of Needham. Green, you know, you understand why uh, now I was trying to get in touch with someone at the library because this seems like a lot of programming from the library. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't in the past have only had like one or two and they had been ones that I think had been supported already. I think but there's it's something with the custodial um, help there that trips up their booking. At the library? Mm hmm. Oh. Um, I think they were shorthanded or something. Oh, okay. 
Um, any specific questions you would want answered about this one? Seems pretty straightforward, just having a venue secured yeah. or a partner. Um, yeah, it didn't seem like he is part of a national um, <clears throat> what is it? He is on the board of a nonprofit that is dedicated to the promotion and preservation of magical history and correct and collecting. Corinne, would they be doing <coughs> magic <coughs> magic tricks to um, show kids? I mean, to stand in front of a group of kids and lecture, it's if they're going to include magic, some of his magic tricks and maybe I, reveal secrets about his tricks, that kind of thing, yeah. I think would be appealing. He maybe will, you could ask if he's developed some of the show already and what it looks like. Yeah, he will accompany his presentation by performing several of Irv's original uh, magical routines. Okay. And um, yeah, so he will include some magic in there. Good. Okay. So it's it's a lecture, but it also has a performance aspect of it, which yeah. makes six hundred dollars a little bit more sense. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we ever want to talk about capping the Massachusetts Cultural Council um, for the stars residency uses the formula where you can only pay one hundred and fifty dollars per hour for the artist resident. Um, I, it's just, I think something for us to think about as we're going through it, but I mean, we don't have a set number. We just kind of go based on what, what's been requested and what we kind of think sounds fair, but. Mm. Um, My only thought with this one is it, it's, um, I mean, it, it could be really great, but right. it, it could be like, it's just so, bizarre and kind of um hokey yeah. don't you remember well, it's like an eccentric sort of character but um this is totally chainsaws and cheeseburgers remember that one <laughs> where i was like i can't believe we funded something called chainsaws and cheeseburgers oh. <laughs> the guy at like a like a lecturer who talked about i don't know it was like a motivational speaker with that he did ch chainsaw sculptures yeah, didn't he do? Didn't he actually do? No, we never did yeah. one, but Pollard, the Pollard students loved it, and it went well. Right. I never in a million years. But that's like a super that. high energy kind of guy. From like when you looked at the when you looked at everything on there, but I don't know what was the feeling that you got from looking at this. Like that the feeling of, of how he would approach it. Did he seem? I don't know. Well, you didn't really talk to him, right? You just. Yeah. yeah, Corrine, call him and see if he's interesting on the phone. Okay. <laughs> we can capture uh -huh. your attention. Why not? Check <laughs> him out. <laughs> that actually might give you some insight. Yeah, if he's really dry, then, you know, maybe it's not a good uh, right. <laughs> presentation not for kids anyway. And he said, did he give an age range? Sorry, maybe you said that and I didn't catch it. Did yeah, he what? Youth, Sorry? To, youth to adult. Yeah. Okay. So, so an all ages thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things that could be absolutely mesmerizing and extraordinary or total failure. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and okay. it depends on the guy's personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll give him a call and see if he's entertaining on the phone or not. Yeah. yeah. All right, what do you got next? Always remember, showcase from the world. Always remember. Um, so this one I was kind of um, stymied on. So the actual musical is gonna happen in Miami. Um, and they give a Needham address, but it's in care of. So I don't know what their, um, relation is to Needham, let alone Massachusetts. Um, so they're gonna have the uh, the musical in Miami. And sorry, let me see what it was in, again for. It was- So $850 to show something on the local cable channel? Yep, so oh, it's, um, always remember it's a, um, oh, for crying out loud. It's a musical about, It 
it was written by uh, Marilyn. And I think it's in regards to the Cuban voice. Um, but what they would do is um, do a synopsis of the musical. So what we would get in Needham is not even the full musical. It would be a synopsis along with interviews from um, the artists. And it seemed almost like kind of like what you would see on PBS where they kind of do a behind the scenes thing. So you wouldn't get the full show, um, but it is being produced specifically to be shown um, on the Needham local cable. Um, okay. It's not a high score to, to me, I would think, but. Yeah, I kind of had it as a 3.5. Oh, you're generous. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just because, so, I mean, it does hit all audiences. It is free. Um, so celebrates. The well, I guess it hits all audience that watch audiences that watch the local cable channel. Correct. Well, um, so it, it is about the uh, Cuban experience and speaks to the plight of refugees around the world. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but again, the lack of connection that I can find specifically to Massachusetts kind of threw me off. Um, I mean, I'm a music fan, um, but yeah, I didn't have a strong <laughs> feeling. I, 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 I truly don't get it. We don't have that many Cuban. They didn't say Latina or whatever. I, 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 All right, I think we can move on from this, this one. <laughs> yeah. I think they're shopping. Okay, Probably. it's the next one's Needham Art Association. Yep. Yeah. So this is um, we've um, they're asking two thousand dollars this year. We've um, granted them in the past five hundred. Um, they would be eligible for the town funds, and this is the monthly demonstrations that they um, do. So it's something that's ongoing for them, where they get um, artists that come in to do um, demonstrations for the public. It's free to attend. Um, they do once a month and, um, you know, watercolors, um, that kind of stuff. And I think there is a good benefit to the, the population. Um, and they will find funding elsewhere if we don't give them the full amount. Um, but this one I gave a solid five because it does seem to benefit whoever's interested. Awesome. Okay, from Needham to the world. Okay, so this is the Needham Community <laughs> Revitalization Trust Fund. Joni, you want me to mute you? <coughs> I think I, yeah. No, okay. I think I'm unmuted. I'm fine. Yeah, no, mute yourself because you're coughing. Oh, no, I'm okay. This is mine. Oh, it is? Okay. Oh, go for it. <laughs> um, this is from Needham to the wor World, a revolving mural project that would be sh shown on a building that faces the town common. They are looking for um, $1,295, which would fund the entire project. And what this is, is, is they're going to choose Needham people who have impacted the world and have a revolving mural at that site that would have an interactive, um, QR, I guess a QR code. Um, yeah, have you all seen it? It's right across from the Fine Wines. They had the Sunita Williams, and then this past weekend they just changed to the new one, the the um, comic writer, Mr. Larson, um, who who did the comics in the Needham Times for a long time. Where so is it's, it? It's it's next to the Fine Wines, facing the Commons. It's like a. So if you're sitting at that fine. light, you'll see it. Uh, um, so yeah, it's it's uh, really cool, actually. Um, yeah, it's cool. So this is for one paying for one of the murals, and it revolve. Did it say how often it changes? Every like three in, months. Every three months. So it would be for one mural for every three months. And do we get to pick who we want? Well, that's that's. I had the questions. So. Who decides who gets portrayed in these murals? Yeah, I know that their committee's gone through and selected a bunch of people um, on a list. Um, if he didn't tell, if they didn't tell you exactly which one it is, you could call they, and be like, "Who is it?" Right. They so they didn't they didn't tell us. 
Um, and it was who is, you know, deciding on how the artwork is portrayed because they're just giving it to one artist and saying, you know, go ahead and, and do this. Um, you mean the designer that makes the... The designer. And uh, what are the materials that, that are... It's just vinyl. Yeah, it's, that's it's what I thought. It was a vinyl printout and yeah. stuck up there for three months. Um, they have a picture of Mr. Levy, Seymour Levy. And, you know, it looks very interesting. Um, oh, is that the one they're going to do, Seymour Levy? No, he's the he's the graphic artist. Oh, oh okay. Um, it says he's, you know, this is just all accolades. And uh, he's also the founder and chair of the Revitalization Trust Fund. Who so is? I don't know, you know how that plays into it. Who's the um, founder and chair? Seymour? He is. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Paul A. Good. Who yeah, wrote Paul Good. He's presented to us a bunch of times. And Good, last yeah. year we didn't fund them for the banners. We funded them the year right. before the banners. And last right. year we chose not to because it was more for like storage and it was boring. So we asked them to come back this year with something more interesting. And so this is what they came up with. Yeah, Joni, I, I, would, I, I would say call him. Yeah, my, that's my that's my question is to he, call him and find because, out who the people are that they're portraying and and how they came to the decision that these, you know. These yeah, I would and I would think could could we fund one that's like a an artist of color or something? Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Somebody connected to the arts. Okay. So I mean, I gave him a four and a half because I thought it's a really great idea, but I don't know enough yet. Um, okay. Um, I don't know what the order is because that thing that the print on that is so small. Oh, oh, uh, oh the need thing? of multicultural. Can you guys not there? see it? Because it's it's huge for me. Can you not see it as well as I can? Well, yes. no, I can't see it. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Um, I have them. They're fine. The need of multicultural fair. Oh, by the okay, way, Shrek that, the, you skip Shrek, Shrek the musical. That's oh, it. okay. So Shrek the musical. This came in from Gail Lustig. Um, by the way, the other one is um, eligible for the partially for the town funds because it's ongoing, but we could choose to fund one that was within the time frame. Okay. Um, the next one is Shrek the Musical from the Needham Community Theater. And my only question is, as far as this is concerned, my question is that they have a budget expenses of 37,000 and they expect their income to be 48,000. Yep, so, that's a good, that's always a good question. Yeah. Um they sold out their tickets it's this weekend and next next weekend. Yeah. And Gail always talked about them having a um a good surplus. Um but you know that just because they're well managed and succeeding, well, doesn't yeah, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't. You know. So I just found something out about two hours ago, um, <coughs> through a friend of mine on Facebook who put up this whole thing. Please don't miss my daughter in Shrek. And it turns out that the lead in Shrek is the daughter of a lifelong friend of mine. I had no idea about this. I had already done this evaluation. So I don't know if I should recuse myself, but she just put it up on, on Facebook. Well, I think I think everybody yeah. should probably know someone in Jack because I know. Like so I mean I just I, I guess her, her name is Aiden O'Neill and she's the, the star. She plays Fiona Fiona? Fiona. I think people when it were very excited about this our our very own community theater. Yeah. So did you give it a four and a half or five or what? Um I gave it a four and a half because I, I, you know, I agree with you that something that's well, well run should not be penalized and that we should absolutely support <coughs> um, our town theater and our community theater. Awesome. Okay. Hey, you got all the easy ones, um, Amy. I gave them all to Joni. I'm sorry. Okay. So the Nina <laughs> Multicultural Fair. We love that one. Ball we love that one. Yourself. I mean, that's, that just goes without saying. Um, and it does fall within the town <coughs> budget, the town grants, because it's on March 26th. Okay. And it just looks fabulous and it's exciting and wonderful. And, and then the five know, studios. Okay. And how um, did that? Oh, I'm budget? sorry. Um, uh, 
uh, the multicultural fair asked for a thousand dollars. And how, what was the budget breakdown? Was it um, um did it seem on. reasonable? I guess is the question. Hold on, I will tell you what the budget is. Do you think you need follow up questions on it or? Um, I know. I think it was. Hold on one second. Yeah, their their budget um it is really about a thousand dollars. It's the fees for the artists, um, invited professional musical dance and other accompanists, etc. Okay. I, I, it's not, <coughs> I think they don't really know exactly. Yeah. Cause who, it's the first time. Right. Okay. Who those people will be. So they don't really know what their budget is, but that would go a long way to helping them. Okay. Wendy, did and, you have a question? You unmuted. Um, I, oh, oh I thought when, Wendy, what? Do, you have, do you have a question? I saw you unmuted. <coughs> you know what this one is? The multicultural fair. Did, did anybody want us to nope. explain that one? Okay. All right. The last one um, yeah. is Needham Open Studios for their May 6th and 7th presentation, and they want $1,200 so that they can rent the high school and extend their venue. It seems pretty clear. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they want to grow, they want to get bigger, they want to also, you know, keep crowding to a minimum and have different places for people to go within Needham and it, it was just, it was very reasonable and very clearly stated. Okay. So, awesome. I, so gave you gave a it five, and I gave them five and they also fall within the um, town guidelines for the grants, for the dates. <laughs> did, this, did this obscenely large size help? Can you guys see better now? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, who's next? Wendy, that's you. All right, Joni, now you can mute. I'm I mean, sorry, babe. <laughs> so I misunderstood what my homework was. Okay. I thought that we were going to be, I was going to get information tonight. And then I just yeah, saw that's when, fine. when Dennis asked for the 400 page document. Yeah. Right before the meeting, I looked, looked at it and I'm like, oh, this is where the information is. <laughs> that's okay. So I okay, agree. No I've been briefly looking at it so I can give you a little teeny bit of information. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got easy ones so I can help too. If it, it's, um, we've, we've funded, you got plugged in band. We funded that for many, many years. I think everybody here in the council loves it. Yeah, so the, the spring band, spring of 2023, plugged in band, they have a huge budget of 76,000, but they're requesting a thousand. Um, you know, I, as I said, I have to read it. <laughs> I, bree I breeze through it. So that's, yeah, I think, I don't know if it's for their, um, usually for scholarships they do. Um, yeah, that's fine. It norm, we don't, you don't have to give a number either. I, I, I don't think we really have questions on that one. If, if you do, you can follow. Um, you can feel free to call them and follow up. It's pretty, it's usually been pretty clear cut through that one. Okay. I just have to literally read all the information. The yeah, that's documents. Fine. That's fine. Um, um, and you definitely have time before our next meeting is December 13th. So. Right, right, right. And I'll um, say that now it's going to be in person at the town hall at the Great Plain Room. We all get to see each other. Yay. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Um, and then the, the quilter show, um, it's strange because on the application, I noticed that they're requesting it for 2022. Yeah, it already happened. So, okay. so yeah. they're requesting money for an event that already happened. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Our, our, it's, it's an 18 month window. So yeah, and they had there, it was the first, it's a pretty solid, it's a quilting group in Needham. Um, it's the first time we've yeah. had them request in a while, I think. I heard it was an amazing show. I yeah, did hear that. Great show. I don't know how great their audience was. They were happy with it and it was on the cover of the Hometown Weekly, so. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so they're requesting um, $300. Not a lot. No. So as I said, I'll, I'll read up on it. Okay. Um, 
The third one is Rehearsal for Life's Freelance Players. It's yeah, we've also funded them a lot, Wendy, for many years. They're, they're like a improv. Yeah, it says opera and musical theater for 40 K to 12 students. And they're requesting 350. Yep. And they, they focus, they have different groups for different towns and we, there's a Needham one. Yes, I did notice that. Afternoon of Brass, number two. Um, and that one happens in Boston and Mechanics Hall in Worcester. Um, I, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's a group performing. So what's the connection to Needham, anything? You know, I'm not sure, I, I have to read it. Okay, well go through that one and if it's not clear, yeah. Um, definitely call them and follow up for next time because I I'm, I don't know what that one is. Okay. All right. So I think I think it might have said that the um, the residents of Needham get free tickets because um, the the residents of the LCC group. Okay. I, I'll read up on it. I'll, I'll confirm that. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. No, that's I, fine. I just, that just, that's fine. That's why we have two meetings, so you can follow up. Yeah, I just didn't understand what I was supposed to do. <laughs> okay. Um, Heather, your turn. And I actually, for this one, I, I, I don't need to um, recuse myself, but it was my idea. So, so I, that I shared with um, Tova. Go ahead, and I'll tell you. Heather, are you muted, sweetheart? Yeah. Um, and she wants to do uh, rain art scavenger hunt, uh, which is she the budget's two thousand five hundred. She's requesting one thousand seven hundred and fifty. The previous year we gave her three hundred and fifty. She thinks it'll serve about five hundred people, not primarily school children. And it's paint that appears in the rain. And uh <clears throat> and the let's see, oops, sorry. Um paint that appears in the rain. Um, and she will use themes of renewal and revival um to to create words and images that people will stencil on the sidewalks, uh, no cost to participants. She has a letter of support from Sarah Shine, Director of Needham Youth and Family Services. Um, so I had had a question. So um, I couldn't answer if it was high quality because I've never seen it. I did touch base with her. I sent her an email, but I hadn't, uh, hadn't heard back. Um, she wanted to talk today, but it was at a time I wasn't able to. So um, uh, I think it's will definitely it's Needham based. It will definitely be accessible and benefit the community. I would imagine. Um, I don't know that it addresses the needs of un underserved or any group. That's not clear, but I guess if it's open, it's potential there. Um, I don't think it really elevates diverse voices necessarily, um, but it does demonstrate, um, let's see, it has a public interest benefit. Um, and so, what did I give it a, I'd probably give it like, a, I, I wanted to, so my question- You don't have her, to score it now if you don't want to, Heather, if okay. you feel better. Yeah, you don't have I to. I mean, uh, my question for her was like, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted a visual. Yeah, yeah. To, I was curious if she'd done it before. And also um, my other question was for, for her, um, what, um, like what, what words would she use to facilitate conversation? Like how she would. Yeah, does it say what the theme is? Yeah, with the, th like there's a theme there, but I'm kind of, I was curious to know how the discussion would go, like how she would. Yeah. 
that was me. We'll definitely follow up with her before. The only history yeah. I'll give you is this is a, um, I bought this Rainworks product, which is like, it's like clear spray paint and you spray it on stuff. So I did it all on my road um, and it shows up in the rain. And I, uh, I've talked to like the town manager about it as a, like a temporary sidewalk. Um, okay. Like they've done in Medford, they did like haikus where you got the whole community to write a haiku and then you spray paint it on the sidewalk with this product. And when it rains, it shows up. So it's kind of like an interactive and then it wears off kind of like sidewalk chalk after a few months. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, so it sounds, I, I know I've heard you talk about it before. So, <laughs> so I, think, I think I probably finally gave up on the fact that I would ever get this accomplished in, in any right. way. No, but it until sounds like heard it, it and, to, and took it and ran with it on her own. Sure. Oh, well, of course. Yeah. And, it's, it's, in the Tova fashion that she does with community art projects, would it would kind of be interesting. It's, it's a good fit. Art. Yeah. I think it would be a good fit. And I've done one of her projects before, and she's a very good communicator, I think. She breaks yeah. it down. So she's going to, um, Amy just booked her to come to the blue tree lighting with the project, the public art project she's working on now called Brighter Ignited. And it's, yeah. a, it's a life-size light bright. And yeah, she's I saw all that. Communities building um, their different, what, what ignites their passion is the theme. And um, then you color something in and you put it in the light bright. And it's this giant light bright that's like you know a 50 on the back of a 50 foot trailer and it goes around to every community and lights up at night so I saw because I saw them working on it at the building where I go oh because so. is it parked at Gorse Mills right now yeah it's huge <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty amazing like I have total faith in her to pull this off yeah um I just had I was curious about a couple of things but yeah. um I guess I was like overdoing my homework but I do think that she would I do have faith that she would pull it off. So, okay. Um, well, we want to get um, Elizabeth back to her granddaughter. So follow okay. up with that one. What's the next one? Needham, do your art, a local cable access show. Oh, okay. Wait. Okay. This one was so strange. Um, <laughs> just a, not, I'm not biased or anything, but um, <laughs> after reading it, this is Bernadette Stockwell, Needham, do your art. It's a uh, project benefits public by enabling creatives to do your art there, um, thereby providing art for the community to enjoy exponentially. So it sounds sort of like like one of those inspirational books for artists that kind of helps them. Um, is it a virtual class then? Or yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, it's a it's a ninety minute live informational and interactive workshop. I guess live informational and interactive workshop to enhance, enhance creativity and elevate mood to help your town. So it would help town residents um, improve or uh, pursue their creative dreams by supporting their unique virtual program that provides frameworks and inspiration to do your art. Okay. So I didn't feel like it was clear how she would get the word out. And it, but it's scheduled for Wednesday, May 17th from 630 to 8. Oh, it is. Wait, well, did I... I saw that? I saw the time in there, but I don't know. Okay, if... maybe I missed. How did I miss? Um... Okay. Uh, yeah. Does it say how she'd publicize it, or who, if there was any part? She said Council on Aging Calendar. She just said that. She said um, announcement in social media, press release to town media outlets, library page, Council on Aging Calendar, and other local sites. It felt a little like she was just throwing out a lot of, I, I haven't talked to her. Um, and the website was really confusing, which is odd for somebody in teaching and communications and planning, I thought. So I don't, I don't know. I have, we haven't worked with her before though, right? Like No, yeah. How do you all feel about just booking a, a, a virtual art class that you don't know if anyone's going to show up to if they don't have a partner? Or, I, mean, I I just I just I don't have a great feeling about it like it, it just seems like it seems like one of the like a sort of self-help kind of guru person that is and it could just from looking at her website I was just like I don't know <laughs> it just it was like a lot of talk without substance is what it felt like when I I would I, say then check and see if she has a community partner um, it didn't help. sound like she did, but I can double check. 
if she was going to find one that would that would make me feel a little bit more comfortable yeah julia you're not okay i can't tell but, joni's nodding Are you i don't know nodding, I Joni? Just, okay <laughs> what was the nodding she, she was agreeing with that that thing too okay that that's your charge on that one and then you, the, your last okay. one is youth connector volunteer ambassadors hang on um, oh story time crafts is your next one which okay, um, so they, I think that's also like we were discussing this last year, like, do we fund her or not? Because you weren't sure. I think last year was like, does she help locally? And she definitely does help locally. So anyway, to get to the point through, um, through read alouds at elementary schools, making infant care kits and gathering books to be donated. Um, so. Yeah, Gail asked questions last year because um, she was, she didn't understand from her grant uh, how it was helpful for Needham since a lot of her um, donations well, think, go to places outside of Needham but I, I have been to the donation center which is right down the street from the high school yeah. now it's in that church across from the library and yeah. she has so many um, high school students getting their community service in because of this like three rooms filled with books games and they're sorting and I think, through them. I think I did write to her too, because my question was, so the, the, it was a lot of money she was asking for, and I'm not really sure exactly. It seemed, it seemed like I wasn't sure because it's volunteer work that she's asking for, right? She is, I think she's asking for support, it sounds like for the workspace. So she rents the space okay. in, in the basement. That was a little on the church. So that's yeah. what it's for. Okay. Yeah. Because it's, it's a because it was titled, and volunteer it, workspace. Yeah. It was titled Youth Connector Volunteer Ambassadors. So that was sort of like, seemed like a way to be able to fund this program, but I wasn't really sure how that money was. Yeah. And I, I did write to her and I did not hear back. And she, it, I, I've, went to her space and heard more about her programs and you definitely talked to her Heather because it's interesting to see um it I think it was hard for her to choose which thing to have write a grant for for us because there are a lot of programs where she collects books and then drives them to at need you know at right places that need help but that the benefit to need them isn't very clear on that the benefit yeah. To Needham is really that it, it's a venue for the the high school students to get their community service and their um, right. charitable. So I think it's sort of like an in, sort of not not like a direct link. Money isn't like a directly going to Needham people or anything in that way, or it's not paying for people per se. But it yeah. seems like the grant money is more to help with all around operations. That's why I was confused that she was talking about the volunteer ambassadors. So yeah, which I think that's like not like main... she needs somebody to organize it or any, it's not like she's talking about paying somebody to organize it or it just it yes. was it was unclear. And then that's why I wrote to her. But and I do know the space, but it just seemed and and I do I've yeah, seen I don't think anybody gets paid. So I don't think there's like a salary support number on that one. Right. It's all volunteer. And I think the only cost is the, you know, the cost associated with picking up the books at all the locations. Does, doesn't she collect at Gorse Mills? Because she's at Gorse Mills. She's got um, a story time crafts studio and book location bin is in the Gorse Mills part. Yeah. Lot. She does some there and then she does some donations at her. Yeah. That, that. Does anybody have other questions about that? Does that seem clear to people or? they have questions about that public benefit or no all right heather see what she she um follows up with and if if you don't get in touch with her i can help i can we can chat too okay all right and then the last one is the dorothy and charles mosesian center for arts mca's west asl story time and interactive creativity workshop which um, would take place at the Needham Public Library would collaborate with them on this project, um, including recommendations for literary selections pending funding. Um, 
And she has a contact person at the library, the children's li librarian. So the budget seemed big and I, I, I've written to her too. I wrote, is the budget for just one time project or for doing this project in many locations? But I had not heard back from her. What I thought was interesting, um, this one was that they're um, recording it and then streaming it. So a thousand dollars could be for that because it includes it might include a videographer at the on site as long uh, as well as the presenter. So it might be for that too. I think it said she because it broke down. I, I can look on here and tell you. If, but I also don't want to slow you down either. We didn't fund oh. it last year because I think we didn't know if it had a partner and we didn't know if it was uh -huh. we had a hard time knowing if it had a lot of public benefit or if it was solicited. I, I'm definitely seeing a need for talking to the library and prioritizing the projects with them. Because if if they, because it also said the farmer's market. So I didn't get that they had actually talked to the library about it. Oh, yeah. It's, you did? Um, yeah, I'm looking at the right one, yeah. I also think this was the last year was the first year they did it. And so they at least have, you know, a year under their belt and they've been doing. Okay. But she it. did. She has a contact person at the library. It also might be good. Heather, could you see if you can get a clip? Because if they recorded it last year, maybe there's like a clip of the program we could see or something. OK, yeah. They didn't submit any pictures or anything with it, right? No. Um, if they recorded it last year, it seems like it'd be easy to see. But going by just the criteria, I mean, it does meet a lot of criteria. Accessible and benefit commu community of Needham, addresses needs of underserved, elevates diverse voices, demonstrates community support. So I mean, this one, I feel like they, it, with partial funding, they might not do it. So I, I would ask that question too. Okay, yeah. Right. Anybody else have other questions on that one? I just, I mean, Mozizan always does great work. So I, if it, if it's a, like a really well produced thing, it might be something you'd be really interested in. But yeah, and again, she, I mean, it it checks all the boxes with on the little criteria page. So I thought that was good. But I can, I will check with them on that. Awesome. Okay, Dennis, your turn. I think we can get through all of them in the next fi fifteen minutes. Go down. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's try. <laughs> um, yeah, so I haven't get the scores yet, but I do read through the projects. So I think I, I do, um, I understand the, what they're trying to do and where the grant number they requested goes to. Okay. Um, so the first three are related to two concerts, really. So the first one is a two, 2022 winter concert. And this is a hosted, uh, organized by Highland Glee Club. Uh, which is um, well established in Nida. And they have done this type of concert in past years with a trackable record. And since June 2021, after COVID, they switched the, spot, the, the location to the church, um, opted to the public library. And they have done four since June 2021. Um, so the this one particular one the, in the application is the for December third, which is uh, coming up in two weeks. Um, essentially, the budget itself is about twelve thousand one hundred sixty five dollars, and they have about fifteen hundred dollars at like a debt like a, a a gap to cover the budget versus the money they have. Most so of that's them why they're asking them, for that amount this year. <clears throat> yeah, fifteen hundred. Okay. So they have, they said they have sales, uh, donations, sponsors, um, and reserves all together is about ten thousand six hundred sixty five dollars and exactly fifteen hundred like a deficit. So um, I think for this one, I inclined to say yes, and but I want to reach out just want to confirm what's their final number in terms of the gap. Although we can't guarantee that it will give that the number they requested, but I definitely want to confirm that. Yeah, and you know also, what, I'm, Dennis, you know what you should do is call them after their show on the third, because then yeah. you'll know how it went and you can get a number. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good it, idea. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, 
so then we should be able to get a very good understanding of how the events goes. Um, so this one, and then second one is a promotional classical music in Needham. Um, this one is um, oh, the Needham it's interesting. Yeah. It's a covers of from it's from October to April next year. Basically, over um, a time window of seven months, so they're gonna host uh, like a four concert, uh, another two student events. Altogether, the six events all happen in Needham. Um, yeah, they're the easy. We've funded them for a long time, and so that's <clears throat> for their whole season. The okay. Society. Yeah, I think that's so, a no-brainer, probably. Right. So the, uh, they have very limited tickets sales. Most of them are through cash donations. Um, so we funded them before already. Yeah, we have for a long time because they're they okay. need them based. I see, I see. Okay, if you know them really well, then I think it's a bit easier job. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the third one is the River Symphony Orchestra 2022 to 23 uh, season. Um, they are doing three concerts. One of them is in Needham Town Hall. It happens in November already. Um, I just want to reach out to them to check uh, how this goes. Um, and then say like a turnout uh, to get more information about it and then to decide um, the number uh, of, the, of the grant. Since yeah, oh, I saw the signs for this. Did you guys on November 13th, it was at Town Hall? <clears throat> yeah, uh, unfortunately, I did not. You got all the musical orchestra ones, Dennis. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think if they, if they got some footage about the, how the symphony goes on that yeah. particular day, that's a good helpful. And also they not only applied to us, um, they applied a few of them in terms of uh, Canton, Norwood, Wheeland, Concord, West Lincoln. So. <clears throat> Does anybody remember last year? Because I think we didn't fund them because they weren't, it wasn't in Needham and it wasn't clear what the, connection was i think the only connection <clears throat> we saw was that one of the performers used to be on the council but we didn't we didn't know who we, it was unclear like who was going to see it we but didn't fund year, them last year for that reason yeah but this year it actually was held in needham so it has yeah it's more power of public benefit. Yeah. okay yeah so i would try to reach out to collect some more information on this one then we yeah, can decide later it's awesome yeah. Okay. So next one is about a Western Friendly Society rehearsal production. Basically, they are looking, they are stage uh, performance, um, particularly with the dancing. So what they are trying to do is they are looking for funding for um, the rehearsal mirrors, which are for dancers um, to see their positions. They are glasses. Each uh, they are looking to buy four, six by eight uh, foot feet. Uh, glasses and mirrors, they, each of them is expensive. It's about $1,000 piece. So they are looking to get 700, uh, sorry, they're looking to get 500 here uh, from us. And they also uh, apply to a lot of other consoles so to see which one can help fund the um, equipments. And the only um, connection to Needham is that there's a couple people that perform with them. Is that right? Um, I don't see that. I can call, I can I can double check on it, but yeah, I, I don't really see that. Seeing that anybody is leaving Needham or has connection with the Needham. Um, yeah, I would definitely check that one because this one seems like a stretch to me. If that's not um, true, it's not based in Needham, and if it's not, yeah, the event is not even in Needham either. It will be. It will be a uh, Western, but what they say is like, okay, if this is a event, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, a uh, it's successful. They can be like to uh, additional programs. So like outside, outside of Western, including ne uh, Needham community is a, um, something in that resort. I think that's kind of a connection with the Needham, but I agree that that's a stretch. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's, that's it. It says that it cast members under the summary. It says it cast members of the Needham community, both child and adult. So 
just the opportunity for people who want to perform, they are more than welcome, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I guess because the mirrors are for rehearsal, <clears throat> then it wouldn't, uh, or the mirrors would be used in the production too. I guess that's it. It says rehearsal and productions. I don't know. That's, it's a trick. It's a tricky one. Uh, it's not it the strongest be application. I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it will be in production though. But it will be for. I think it says it in the project question. title. It says society rehearsal and production. Yeah, but yeah, say, check that. It says rehearsal mirrors for our spring production. So okay, so it is only just for for rehearsal. Yeah, it's okay. it's a it's a teaching tool for for dancing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, it's similar to the to the mirrors on the wall, which is affixed on the wall. This one it has wheels on the bottom and it's glassless, and you can move around. Very light, but uh, just equivalent to mirrors. Each of them is very expensive, a thousand dollars a piece per okay. piece. Yeah. So yeah. So the the <clears throat> public benefit for Needham would be for the people taking. That are performing in it, which is kind of a weird yeah. If a, yeah, if a dancer is a sh if a, okay. a dancer is a costume in that in that performance. All right, I think that's clear. Yep. Thanks, Dennis. Do you have anything no else to add? Are you good? No problem. I will. I will report back once I get more info on others. Okay, I I have to still call um Aicha Kelly from the Center of the Heights for the ones that Bala and I are working on, but um quickly. Uh, one is the script writing class where the um, the the seniors at the at CAF do some script writing, which is supposed to be really good for memory. Um, the and all three of that has a um, letter of support um, and is within the town's timing. Um, the next one is Sean Fullerton. We funded him for a few years. He he plays the guitar, acoustic music. This year would be over breakfast. He asks for 250 bucks to, and the, and apparently the seniors really love him. They go gaga for him. Um, the next one is uh, one that we've had in the past. It's uh, Eileen Herman Hess, and they requested her to come back again in the fall. Um, they don't have a date scheduled, but it's um, the but they've asked it for 450 dollars. Um, and then the. The other ones at the bottom, the make and take mosaic rock. Um, this is a good. This is a good one that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, it's kind of similar to John Lechner, who um, from Gorse Mills, and the fact that it's Dina Trone Krasno. We funded her um, seven hundred and fifty dollars last year to do the mosaic tiles for Gorse Mills the community art project. Um, so she's coming to us again with another community art project, which is like a, a make and take mosaic rock. Um, so it's a solid community project. Um, the rocks would be placed around Gorse Mills. Um, yeah, it, I, I, and that it's pretty simple. I, I don't think it's, um, it's using some high school students as a partner, I think. I guess my question would be if she has, um, she doesn't really have dates, but she's been talking to the school a little bit um, to have them do. So maybe asking her what the more fleshed out schedule would be. Um, I do a lot of those painted rock projects. So they're pretty simple. I don't know. Um, and I, I think I did one at Gorse Mills with the Needham Art Association at one point. Um, I don't I don't know what other questions there are on it, but I'd love someone else to look at it <laughs> to tell me what how they feel when we vote on funding um, next time. If it if it strikes their fancy too. Um, the next one is 100 years of Boston comedy. There's no venue. They want the library. It's uh, just a presentation about the history of comedy in, in um, Boston. Interesting topic. Um, no partner. Um, I don't know who would be super interested in it. And the then um, at, the, at the senior center. Yeah, I, they wanted it to be for the library. So when I, yeah. I'll try calling the library and see if I can talk to them about the people that are interested <clears throat> in the library. 
Um, and I'll ask the senior center if it's something they're interested in. If they don't have a partner, I can't see it being sold very easily. I would put it as a lower lower on the on our scale of funding groups. Um, and that's it. And then the last one is Dennis. So um, the Chinese Friends of should, should, Needham should I, Celebration I Gap. Yeah, so I'll let, you, I'll let you leave, but then we'll wrap up after that. So we, you can just say bye, Dennis, if you okay, want. Okay, thank and, you very um, much. We'll all meet thank on you. December bye. 13th. The only last thing I wanted to say is that we have three, um, we, we interviewed three new candidates for the council and um, recommended to Marcus that all three of them seemed like they would be good fits. Um, they're filling the open heads that we have. So we might have three new people joining us pretty soon. So that's it. Great. Bye, Dennis. Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. You. Bye. So yeah, this is the Chinese Prince of Needham's uh, New Year celebration gala. It's for a gala, so we've never actually funded a, um, a benefit before. I'm not sure. Um, uh, we're also the art project is something else, um, and then so this is their second project they're applying for funding for. Um, the gala would have um, performances at it, and so I'm sure that money would go towards that. Um, a fundraising event is a little different in my opinion for funding just because then you're kind of like a sponsor of the events usually sponsors by tables or something so I guess it's something to think about um, it's not my favorite type of project to fund um, but obviously it's a worthwhile organization um, it hits a lot of the our priorities um, but obviously what not happens if other groups like this come with the same kind of thing you know i i i, re I read through it because i just i actually mistake i made a mistake and read three that weren't mine as mine it, i don't know what i did but anyway i read that one um yeah i mean i think it's honestly before we go i think it's great to read through all of them so you can have an opinion yeah. on them and so if you have time please do read through them i do um recommend going to the mass cultural council website and logging in that way and clicking on the 30 it says 39 and then you can scroll through the easy parts instead of scrolling through that 400 page pdf it's awful um but yeah i mean i i funding a gala is not something we've done before it the public benefit is weak to me because it only has public benefit if you're buying a ticket. So um, I, that uh, it's not something I'd, I would recommend funding. Um, I would fund fully the other project that's going on. Um, I agree. But I, I, I don't know how everybody feels. I don't think it's actually technically. Yeah, I have. Charlie, I, I think that um, the conversation should be, shall we, should the Arts Council be represented there? And, and that would be buying a ticket or two. You know, I, I think Joni's absolutely right. We don't want to get into subsidizing galas, but it, it might fit with a cultural plan for a cultural representative, whether it's one of us or someone um, else goes to the event. Just, to, just a thought. You wanna be my date, Elizabeth? I'll buy a ticket and sure. go. You could be my date. Yeah, but I mean that we have yeah. a little, we have a little pot of money that we keep. I don't know if other arts organizations are gonna have benefits, but it's certainly, within the realm of possibility to have someone from the cultural council attend these various things. But it, yeah, I don't think we could do, I, I don't know, that feels like- I, be, I, Is um, this really an arts gala or just a cultural gala? That, that was my question too, was it, is it truly a, a gala or is it more like a Chinese celebration for the new yeah. year? For, their, for, the, for the community. It's a right. fundraiser. This one is a, this one is called a, a yeah, I know, I guess that's, that's a good, I do I think feel like there are some fundraisers that are more presentation of different, <laughs> like recite, re showing different things and fundraisers than like a straight up like auction. I think that, I think the thing that's weird is it's like we fund projects, not, or even an event that's a cultural event. 
Yeah. But funding a fundraiser seems very weird. Well, I, I can, uh, I'll follow up with the MCC and to see if there's any guidelines on this, if that, that would be helpful for us. You um, can look, you can look at it the way the things that we're all talking about reach out to the community. This is very insular. You have to buy a ticket to be inside this group inside. There's nothing that's going out into the community from this. Well, it's bringing the community together, a segment of the community. A segment of maybe, the community. Maybe the diversity group cares. I, I just see, and I know I'm speaking from my experience in the city of Boston, but uh, you're trying to get the city more involved. They've given some money. Somebody from the city or a group should attend things like this. I mean, oh, and they definitely do. I've seen, I mean, I've seen picture the picture of it in the past yeah. and uh, re representatives and um, well, good. So, but, but I don't think funding from like our funding, right? Like, but sometimes you have to buy a ticket to these things. That was my only point. Yeah, Amy, does the fund? town ever fund Amy? Does the town ever pay for um, tickets to for staff to go to like events like this? No, okay. Okay, good to know. <laughs> that was the, that was an easy question. I know, like, there's like chamber things, but that they don't pay for that either. It's yeah, not not to my knowledge. So if you see elected officials at an event, they are paying for their own tickets. Okay. Good and oftentimes staff are asked um, to attend events and are are comped um, okay. in because they're serving a, a role as sort of you know as as staff. But there's there's a lot of guidelines as far as you know what municipal staff can and can't accept or or elected officials you can't accept anything that's worth over fifty dollars and so it's. Um, it's pretty strict. Yeah, that's for us too. So, okay. Yeah. Can you find out, Charlie, what specifically is going to happen at the gala? Yeah, I mean, it's perform. Most of the, I mean, the, there's performances, a lot of performances. So, um, yeah. Well, but it is a fun. I know for, as a, as and, I mean, and I am going to bow out. Okay. Yeah, well, I think I think well done. I'll just follow up with. Um, some questions on that and we can talk more about it next time but you guys did a really great job night is nine nine oh four well done we'll see you on in, okay don't forget in person december 13th um and you'll get an agenda happy Bye. thank you guys everybody stay yeah. healthy happy thank holidays you. well done